What is up YouTube, Jamie the Kid 0 here, just a quick one before we jump into today's video, just wanted to give a huge shout out to Yugi Joe, we weren't originally going to have content for the next couple of days due to my workload at my actual job, but he was wonderful enough to step in and allow me to use some of the commentary work I did for him over the weekend for the Yugi Joe online series. I recommend checking out the entire VOD streams if you haven't already, and check out all of his social media for when the next event goes up, I'll be sure to be casting that, I do hope. Um, but for now, hope you enjoy the games that I've casted over, um, and let me know your thoughts. Cheers guys, enjoy. Oh, and definitely forgot to say it, hit that sub button. Good afternoon, duelists, and welcome back to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Online series. It's going to be myself, JamieTheKid00, and Rufio bringing you the action from round four. This one is going to be a bit of an interesting one, a little something different. It's going to be Oliver Newton versus Adam Black, and they're both playing Adam Ancipator. So we're going to see uh, Adam well, back in a open with a rather threatening board of set one back row pass. Uh, so I wonder what Oliver is going to have for us. So he's going to be opening up with the uh, incredibly powerful opening play of Marionetta. It's going to allow him on the normal summon to set an Altergeist Trap from the deck if there wasn't an effect Veiler to match it. Um, do you have any insight into this matchup, Joe? Do you... Uh... Uh, I'm, I'm quite honest and quite open. Uh, Altergeist is probably my least favourite deck to exist. <laughs> so, seeing it in action is one thing, but uh, Blackie's one of our boys, so uh, mm -hmm. it'd be quite funny to see him on stream. Yeah. And see how he gets on as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I'm hoping he's going to have a, bit, a more productive normal summon. It's obvious he didn't have the Marionetta from the original normal summon, well, lack of a normal summon. Uh, but he has drawn it off the top, I believe. I think that was what the hand shuffle was disguising. Uh, so the normal summon of the Marionetta for Adam in the red. Uh, I wonder what that's going to get him, though. So it is, it is actually going to go through, which is better than the situation for Ollie's one. He is going to add a protocol, an incredibly powerful trap the deck has access to. It looks like he's just going to crash the Marionetta into its opposing number. Makes sense. I think it's wise. Uh, it doesn't really serve too much of a purpose having on the field, aside from using that protocol. And if that's a manifestation he's just set, then of course he can get it straight back as a resource. Oof, but the spoofing in the end phase is going to allow Ollie to shuffle back in the Silquitius, and I'm almost certain we're going to see a multi-faker added off of that. If there wasn't an Ash to match it. Big Ash energy. Mm, mm, mm. And I'm not too familiar on the rulings on that. That's so interesting that it's a cost to send back. So the Ash is actually impactful here. Yeah, there's some kind of like weird scenarios in which you could use it to like bounce around floodgates and things Ooh, like that. Speaking of the manifestation, it is going to be activated to bring that Marionetta back from the graveyard. Oh, no, sorry. It's going to be flipped and used on spoofing. My apologies. Again, just like before, we're not in the voice chat, so we're not going to see them communicating their effects. Uh, but spoofing is actually going to put back that manifestation. And now it's going to get the multi-faker. And this is obviously a big part of their sale. Multi-faker is crucial mm -hmm. to the strategy that they employ. So this and is of a course good the manifestation resolves, bringing back the marionetta. So there's going to be a lot of damage coming in pretty fast. Do you think that uh, multi-faker is going to be summoning? Uh, I forget the name, the mermaid. Uh, I would have thought Silk personally, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Usually, when they're going on the on the offensive, we can we can often see them searching out the blue one. I suppose that they can get there. It is sorry, the Melly Seek. Yeah, the Melly Seek. But it's going to be met with a torrential tribute. That's a big old blowout. Unless there's something to stop it. I don't think there is. No, my body oh. is a shield in sight. However, there are going to be a few recursion effects. So Marionetta and Multifaker don't have any value here, but Meliseek is going to allow for an add of a monster from the deck to the hand. And most importantly, Oli hasn't even normal summoned here, so he could just add another Marionetta and set himself up a, a pretty negate. Yeah, he's already got three cards in hand, plus that now as well, so that puts yeah, him in a good so place. We, even with the massive blowout potential of Torrential Tribute, we, we just don't see anything happen. So a Manifestation is going to be triggered for, uh, for Adam. And that's, of course, going to be bringing back the Marionetta in his own graveyard. I wonder if he's activating this to use, say, a multi-faker that, that he has in his hand, maybe. Potentially. Because I'm not sure how far this gets us, unless he's just setting up the um, the protocol uh, to negate uh, Ollie's Marionetta. 
that's potentially the the line of play I see here. Yeah, it could be. Mm. Of course, Ollie can't dodge, uh, can't use uh, spoofing to dodge any effects like that either, because spoofing has been used this turn uh, on the manifestation. This is quite an interesting matchup, actually, because both of these are very well versed at these decks. Yeah, both so, players have been playing uh, this in excess of a year. Yeah, so hopefully we'll we'll see a nice back and forth here, like we're actually mm. starting to see at the beginning. Yeah, very much so, very much so. So it looks like Ollie's just working out where he wants to take this play, and he is going to set one back row and pass back to Adam. So let's see what Adam has here. He takes a draw. The protocol is flipped, so he's obviously going to activate an effect that he wants to have protected. Uh, or potentially he's just using that to trigger a multi-faker in his hand. There you go. So the multi-faker does come down, and its effect should be successful in resolving, except... Uh, well, of course, the, pro the protocol gets negated by that impermanence. Memory serves. Bit of a weird interaction going on here. So I think with the way that uh, impermanence would negate simultaneously, there's a potential that uh, even though the impermanence would be negating the protocol, the, the multi-faker couldn't have been negated. So he has to go activate the ash and then use the impermanence. Uh, again, Strange. without the communication in the chat, it's difficult for us to tell. Yep. Uh, but we are going to see its effect, its effect negated, and they're going to be linked away into a Hextia, which is, I suppose, debatably the stronger card in this matchup because it is a spell or trap negate. And, of course, we see a lot of traps hitting the board. Certainly. And Spoofing's lost a lot of potential as well for both players, really, because both of their multi-fakers are now out of play. It's not a lot of ways to recur them outside of that manifestation. So we're going to see the Marionetta come down. Hextia activate in response to what looks to be the spoofing. Potentially. Might be mistaken. So, uh, yeah, sorry. I think he uses the protocol in response to the... Um, in response to the Marionetta's effect, tributing the Hextia. Uh, he then attempts to use the Hextia's search effect, and then the Ash Blossom negates it. Uh, Ollie has, however, burned his normal summon, so with that, with only the spoofing on the field, he passes turn back to Adam. Adam looks like he's struck gold and drawn the Marionetta. Certainly does. Look. I wonder if he plays more than one manifestation. So that could be really, really big here. He does! There you go. He immediately scoops it up. So game one is going to go to our uh, player in the red. That is going to be Adam. Um, what do you side in a mirror match like this? It's actually quite a difficult one because I imagine the majority of what they would side would be to combat. Of course, not so many back row heavy decks. Mm. He's usually going to win those kind of matchups. What they may have, I guess, is something that handles uh, a little bit of trap stuff because of Eldlich and the like. Yeah. So I guess potentially... They have something that hurts the opponent, but I don't really know what you would play. I think maybe some cosmic cyclones or something that would be coming in here. There could be a possibility for sure. I think your card economy is too important for you to play things like Twin Twister. I agree, 100%. Uh, unsurprisingly, we are going to be seeing Ollie in the blue going first. Let's see what kind of an opener he's going to present us with. If only we still had Red Reboot at three. <laughs> It's a really impactful card in control versus control matchups. Yeah, absolutely. But of course, I'd expect both of these players to still be playing the one copy. You would think, think so. I don't think the mirror is completely unexpected, and it's a one card blowout uh, in a lot of those situations. Yeah, and I think it's one of those cards that you want to have available to you. If your opponent does hit you with one, you want mm. an option to stop it yourself. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time that does come up. Yeah, so we're going to see two set cards so far. No normal summon, just a normal set. Um, I'm inclined to not think that's a Melu Seek, because, of course, the common play is to make Link Karibo. I agree. Uh, we are, oh, very powerfully, we are going to see Adam open up with Extravagance, mm. and it is going to be countered by the Ash Blossom. Pot of Duality triggered on the second. Vela, nice. Manifestation, Cosmic Cyclone. So there's the Cosmic we were talking about before. I think that might be the pickup here, right? I would think so. I mean, obviously, we don't know what he has in hand, but yeah. I mean, taking one, yeah, there we go, it's as expected. We know that the sets are going to be impactful either way. Mm -hmm. And I think the lack of a, of a strong normal summon indicates that the effect Vela would be an incorrect pick at the moment. 
So all you'd be holding onto it for is for essentially a, a oh my goodness, let's skip that point because we're gonna see an end of the battle phase evenly matched coming down. What's going to I be was kept? about to say, he had to lose the back row because he was going to lose whatever was left anyway to the Cosmic mm. Cyclone. Very, very true. So we're going to see a normal summon of a Marionetta. This could be another quick one for us. I wanted a bit more screen time. <laughs> it's like they're messing with us. They know. know. They're like, these guys, they're not going to get <laughs> to the So the Marionetta is going to grab that manifestation we saw earlier on off of the pot. Let's see a second set back row, a third set back row, and my goodness. You've got to think he's in a good position here. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, in a control matchup, which comes down to so many factors of card economy, evenly matched in a situation like that, such a massive blowout. So we're going to see Ollie move to standby phase. Uh, there's a, a back row was being targeted for a moment. I think there was just a bit of discussion about what was where, because of course the manifestation was set off the marionetta. So we wanted to be sure of where every card was. So a pot of duality is going to be triggered. Let's see what insight that's going to give us into Ollie's list and, and what he could potentially need here. I do want to see him come back from this. An evenly match like that to see a player come back would be uh, a, a, a real a real good bit of Yu-Gi-Oh cinema. Yeah. Although saying that, it would be quite an achievement if Adam does go on to win this. Going second against Altergeist. With Altergeist yourself, the definite, you know, not a fast deck by any means. Oh, it's an incredible back foot. I mean, this is a matchup where commonly, where it's commonly acknowledged that if you win game one, you're going to win the whole match, just because that first turn is so important. Indeed. It's a good mill. Mm hmm So a reveal of impermanence, impermanence, Marionetta. Um, the Marionetta may well be the strong pick here. We, we don't know if there's a protocol. Um, but at this situation, it may well be worth just playing into it because at least if a, a protocol flips up, he trades Marionetta for Marionetta. I think the impermanences are just a little bit late in this situation as well. I mean, there's already a Marionetta sat on the field. It's done its job. You don't really need to, need to negate it at this stage. So the set wasn't Belly Seek. I'm surprised we didn't see that make um, Link Aribo earlier on. Uh, to maybe set up with an extra monster, but of course I, I don't know the matchup all that well. Uh, the Mel you seek is going to uh, make a direct attack. It's going to hit, and are we going to see its effect trigger? The effect is going to trigger targeting the closest card to deck for Adam. It's going to hit a solemn strike, and it doesn't look as though the strike was chained. Of course, strike is probably not going to get us a huge amount of value here, regardless. Um, you'd basically just be trading the 1500 to stop your opponent making an extra monster. Well, he's going to move to main phase two, and I think we're going to see that Marionetta hit the board. I'd expect him to be trying to use the Marionetta to set a card and then maybe uh, try to summon a Hextia and a Hail Mary play, especially now that we've seen the strike go. I'm very, very confident that that last back row we don't know off of Adam would be... Uh, a protocol so i feel like it's a very card important card to have in the matchup so the fact that he set the manifestation tells me it's potentially a protocol certainly looks that way mm -mm. so the marionetta is going to trigger and resolve so we are seeing ollie search his deck so no negations here maybe maybe not a protocol or maybe he's just holding late for something like a hextia to hit the board Again, like we said, you know they're both pretty well versed in these decks, so yeah. they'll be they'll be holding resources for the right moments. You you would expect. Very very true. I mean, we are now in the main phase too, so uh, Adam doesn't have to worry too much about Ollie advancing the game state in terms of monsters, uh, because the pressure that the monsters apply is very low outside of the battle phase. It's all just negates. So we are going to see the Marionetta link away. And now we're going to see the Melu Seek as well. It's worth noting that it appears that they've switched to the actual chat on the uh, on DB itself, so they are a little bit slower going through their plays than they would be normally. Mm -mm -mm. So we are seeing a brief pause between the players. I think they will have just been discussing something in their voice chat. I am noticing that there is a judge in their lobby, so there may be a slight delay in their plays. There may just be a quick judge discussion taking place. We'll keep you guys posted as and when we get a bit of information on that front. So he's returning that to the field. 
Yeah, it looks as though there may be a bit of a dispute over uh, some matter, so I think there's just a brief pause while they reset the game state, uh, and it appears as though something is being reversed. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so a quick update we had is it looked as though there was a, uh, an establishment from the players that something was misclicked. Uh, so there was oh, a quick reverse. On. Cosmic Cycle. Yes, ah, of course. So that was that was the issue. Yes, 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 yes. Pot of di pot of duality locked him out. You want to forget? So we saw the Cosmic Cyclone used in the end phase to clear away uh, the manifestation that had been set up off the Marionetta. We're going to see Adam summon another Marionetta to the field, and the Marionetta's effect is going to resolve. Ollie has authorized it. So now we see the protocol come down, accompanying that set manifestation. And this is... Adam is so far ahead in resources now. Of course, no such pot of duality locked down here either. So he is going to successfully summon the Hextia, and I wouldn't be surprised if the protocol flips up behind it. Sorry, the manifestation uh, to put a marionetta behind it to turn it into a rather okay. lethal 3 1 beta. This is what this deck does. It sets up and just gradually starts to snowball. And once it does, it's actually very, very difficult to deal with. Very much so. We're now looking at a board of a spell trap negate and a set monster negate into Ollie's two cards. And of course, we are going to see the Meli Seek try to dig for a, for an extra card here, but if he doesn't have the right arrangement in hand, this could be game with the two negates staring him down. So we are going to see Marionetta added. But do you have any other insights as we potentially move into the final turn? It would just be interesting to see what he, he has. I mean, Ooh. if he's got something like evenly matched, then he might be in a good place. Um... But whether he's got that in or not is is another question. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, okay. It's going to be a scoop up. So Ollie, content that he doesn't have any further responses to that field, and we are going to see Adam take the mirror match in 2-0 fashion. Um, so just to have a quick meta discussion before we um before we drop off, how do you think uh, both of these players are going to kind of fare in the overall meta? Have you had much time to actually think about how? Altergeist does against some of the powerhouses like an Emancipator or Eldritch. So this is one of the things I was I was thinking about now. Obviously, we see there how much interaction and control the deck can actually have, uh, and that may be something that does favour it against decks that would otherwise be far more potent. They are both very confident players in the deck; they know it very very well. Ooh, ooh. Um, I do think that, that probably puts them in good stead. They would know that this is a good potential meta pick to try and overthrow the two bigger decks yeah yeah definitely definitely i mean my only real concern is that while this deck has really good um kind of a really good advantage system i my main concern is its eldlich matchup because i feel like eldlich just does the same thing so much better but it's self-replenishing yeah it's certainly a you know a very very strong deck it's my personal believe that it's the best deck of the format i know a lot of people disagree with that they'll mm. say adamantopator but honestly i think eldritch is hands down probably the i would say the most consistent and best deck overall mm -hmm. um so yes it, it certainly does have those control variants down to a t it does a lot better than what a lot of other decks do but i don't know it must be something that they're seeing in this that gives it an edge over those decks that they would continue to play or maybe of course it could just be a case of they're just very confident with it and want to go down that route very much so very much so well i'm excited to uh to see how this will go we'll do we'll make every effort to track these players as their journey continues through the yugijo open series um but for now that is going to be all from myself and rufio for our casting for today uh, we have got two more rounds of yugio coming up for you before we close the broadcast today so please do stay tuned for all of that but for now we hope you've all enjoyed please do stay tuned stick, stick with us while we go through some messages from our sponsors and we'll be right back with the yugi joe online series hope you've all enjoyed see you guys very soon <laughs> 